Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to talk about methods of proof. As economists we are often dealing with mathematical proofs, so it is a, a good idea to have a taxonomy of proofs in mind so that uh, if you read a proof you can recognize it, you can check whether it is uh, complete, um, you can uh, categorize it, you see what kind of proof it is, and uh, uh, you're also hopefully able to uh, write your own proofs at some point. So uh, uh, the, the good news is that the list is very short uh, because we are usually concerned uh, with statements of the nature statement A implies statement B. And there are only four methods to prove this statement that A implies B. These four methods are the direct proof, the proof by contraposition, the proof by contradiction, and the proof by mathematical induction. So I'm going to go through all four methods and give an example for each. Uh, and I'm always going to use the same example, the geometric series, so that we can uh, uh, see the four different methods working on the same object and can appreciate the differences. So let me start with the direct proof. Um, so the idea is that we want to show A implies B. And we do this uh, by showing that by assuming A and then showing that this implies a statement A1, implies another statement A2, implies a sequence of statements until we arrive at statement B. Straightforward, that's why it's called direct. So let me give uh, the example. So as promised, uh, we look at the geometric series. So let's say that statement A is uh, a variable let Let's call it S sub n, is given by the sum q to the power of 0 plus q to the power of 1 plus da 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 plus q to the power of n, where q is a real number less than 1 in absolute value. Then it follows that statement b, S n is given by the fraction 1 minus q to the power of n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q. We prove this directly and it's always nice to tell your reader when the proof begins and when it ends. Uh, so we begin by assuming a, so sn is given as the sum of over q to the naught plus q to the 1 plus da 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 plus q to the n. Then I can uh, multiply this sum by q. q to the 0 becomes q to the 1. q to the 1 becomes q square. Uh, q to the n minus 1 becomes q to the n. And finally q to the n becomes q to the n plus 1. That would be uh, statement A1. Now I can, can, can subtract the two, so I get Sn minus Qsn is uh, Q0. All the intermediate terms here cancel each other. Uh, minus Q to the n plus 1. That would be statement A2. Now I can uh, write the left hand side as 1 minus q times sn and I can write q to the power of 0 of course as 1. This would be statement A3 and now I can write sn as 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q and that would be statement B. And there my proof ends. And it's also always nice to let your reader know that uh, potential text that is following after this is not part of the proof, so as not to confuse them. Direct. Then, 
Alternatively, I can prove the same statement by contraposition. And in order to explain contraposition, I first have to take a little detour. Um, I'm first going to uh, explain to you why, let me start over here, um, explain to you why the statement A implies B is logically equivalent to the statement not A or B. So this symbol here is the logical OR and this symbol is the logical END. So A implies B is equivalent to not A or B and we show this by truth tables. So this is really the bedrock of mathematics. Um, so if we have a statement A and a statement B, then there are of course four different cases I can entertain. So both statements are true. Uh, statement one is true, statement two is false. Statement one is false, statement two is true, or both statements are false. There are no other possibilities. Um, what uh, about the statement A implies B? Now if A is true, then if A implies B is true, B also must be true. So um, in the case that A and B are true, uh, statement A implies B, uh, well I should say can be true, but certainly uh, um, uh, if A implies B and A is true, then B must be true. Um, if A implies B and A is true, then B must be true. So if B is false, then A implies B is false. If statement A is false, but B is true, now this is a bit tricky because the statement A implies B doesn't say anything about possible other causes for B. Um, so it could be that uh, while A is false, there is another statement C that also implies B. And so because C is true and C is not here captured in our truth table, um, and C implies B, B is true. Uh, while A is false. So this statement can still be true even though A is false because again uh, it might be that uh, that another statement C has implied B um, and C and A have nothing to do with each other. If A is uh, if B is false um, then uh, and A is false then uh, the statement A implies B can still be true. Um, and so we have our truth table configuration for the statement A implies B. Now let's compare this configuration with the statement not A or B. And this is actually a bit easier to understand uh, because now I can just check not A or B. Um, Okay, so uh, not A is not true because A is true, uh, but B is true. And since we're looking at not A or B and B is true, the statement is true. Um, not A, since A is true, not A is false, or B, B is also false. So here the statement is false. Uh, in the third case, A is false, so not A is true. So the statement is true, I don't even have to look at B. And the same holds for the fourth case. So I see that the truth table configuration of not A or B is the same as the one for A implies B. And from that we conclude that we have logical equivalence between the statement not A or B and A implies B. Good. Fine. What does that have to do with contraposition? Well, uh, this means that when we want to show A implies B, what we're showing actually is the truth of the statement not A or B. What happens if I prove not B implies not A? Well, by what we have just learned, let me define this event here 
as my new A tilde and this event as my new B tilde. So I'm I'm showing that A tilde implies B tilde. Then we have just learned that this is equivalent to not A tilde or B tilde. So not A tilde or B tilde. Well, this is by definition of A tilde and B tilde. This is not not B. Two negations, of course, are positive. Or not A. Aha, and now I see that this is equivalent to two negations are positive, B or not A. And of course, B or not A is the same as not A or B. So this is equivalent to A implies B. So, and this is the upshot of contraposition. Instead of assuming A and then through a sequence of statements arriving at B, I can go the other way around and I can assume the opposite of B, not B, and then through a statement, through a sequence of statements arrive at the statement not A. And I have shown precisely the same. This is contraposition. So maybe that was a bit abstract. So let's go to our concrete example, the geometric series. And now we assume not B. That is, we say as N not equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q implies not a as n is not equal to q to the 0 plus q to the 1 plus dot dot, dot plus q to the n. Okay, let's prove this. Um, so I define a variable as tilde n as exactly this fraction 1 minus q to the n plus 1 over 1 minus q. And this now by assumption is not equal to my variable as n, whatever it may be. If we now show that S n tilde is equal to q naught plus q one plus dot dot plus q to the n, and that's of course then um, by assumption not equal to S n. Uh, then we have shown not a. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so again, I'm proceeding along quite similar lines. So I uh, look at uh, S n tilde minus Q times S n tilde. Um, and this now, uh, by my assumption that S n tilde is equal to this fraction, is equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1. Uh, but um, uh, I can certainly write 1 minus q to the n plus 1 in the following fashion. I can write it as q to the no, to the 0, that would be 1, uh, plus uh, q to the 1, plus dot dot dot, plus q to the n, and then I subtract that again, minus q to the 1, uh, minus dot dot dot, minus q to the n. So I haven't done anything if I now also subtract q to the n plus 1. Uh, this I can group as uh, um, q to the 0 plus q to the 1 plus dot dot plus q to the n minus q times um, q to the 0 plus q to the 1 plus dot 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 plus q to the n. And this, of course, I recognize as my s n tilde and this also as my s n tilde, and so um, I can I have therefore uh, shown that s n tilde is equal to q naught plus q one plus dot dot plus q to the n um, 
but by assumption this is not equal to Sn and so I have shown that um, if Sn is not equal to this fraction then Sn is not equal to the sum and so I have proven the sum formula for the geometric series uh, by contraposition. Three, contradiction. Again, we want to show A implies B, which now we know is logically equivalent to the statement not A um, or B. What we do in the contradiction is we assume the opposite. Assume the opposite. So the opposite is not not A or B. This is equivalent to not not A, two negations of course are positive. And if I negate the OR operator, I get the AND operator. So uh, not not A and not B. And this is equivalent to A and not B. So I assume not B and A and show that this leads to an obvious contradiction. And an obvious contradiction is a statement such as that another statement Z and not Z hold at the same time. Yeah, that can obviously not be the case that a statement and its negation hold at the same time. So let's go into our example of the geometric series and show it by contradiction. So we're assuming not B and A. So A again was the variable Sn is given by the sum Q0 plus Q1 plus dot 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 plus Q to the n. And now not B is Sn is not equal to 1 minus Q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus Q. And I assume now that these two statements are true at the same time. Yeah? So I start with statement a, so Sn is equal to Q to the 0 plus Q to the 1 plus da 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 plus Q to the n. Um, then I can write Sn minus Q times Sn uh, as uh, Q to the naught plus Q to the 1 plus da 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 plus Q to the n minus Q to the 1 minus Q to the 2 minus da 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 minus Q to the n minus Q to the n plus 1. Um, here I factor out Sn, so I get minus Q in parentheses times Sn. And on the uh, right-hand side, of course, I get Q to the naught minus Q to the n plus 1. And now I have that Sn is equal to Q to the naught minus Q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus Q. But at the same time, Sn is not equal, that was the assumption minus b here, which we are also making, 
at the same time um, Sn is not equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q. And uh, so you can phrase the contradiction as this statement implies that q to the naught is not equal to 1. This is obviously a contradiction, and then usually people make uh, people draw a little uh, a little uh, symbol like the lightning striking um, that uh, we arrive at a at a contradiction here. Um, so we have a, a nonsensical statement here. Alternatively, uh, so, so often there's quite a bit of uh, a freedom as to which uh, uh, nonsensical statement to pick. Uh, alternatively, um, we could also make the argument that uh, if we now have arrived at, uh, at, at this point here, so we have arrived at 1 minus q times Sn is equal to q0 minus q to the n plus 1, um, uh, we could not question that uh, q to the zero is equal to is equal to one, but we could just deduce from that well as n then is therefore equal to one minus q to the n plus one divided by one minus q. This is statement B, yeah. Uh, but we also have assumed at the same time n as n is not equal to one minus q to the n plus one divided by one minus q, which is statement not B, yeah. So then we have arrived at a statement Z and not Z, or here B and not B, actually statement B itself. Um, so uh, the contradiction then is B and not B, and uh, that's a contradiction. So again, if you will, lightning strikes. And that's the end of the indirect proof, or the proof by contradiction. Okay, the last method is that of mathematical induction. And this is for statements that can be indexed by natural numbers. So what we want to show is a n can be indexed by a natural number implies b n for all n natural numbers. And the way we proceed is we establish a what is called induction base. So we show the statement for n equal to 0, or sometimes n equal to 1, or sometimes some higher n, depending on the, uh, on the specific case. But in our with the geometric series here, n equal to 0 is going to be fine. So uh, a naught implies b naught. And this is followed by the induction step. Uh, which assumes that the statement is true for uh, for an n. Assume statement is true for n. So a n implies b n. And then show that then it is also true for the next natural number for n plus 1 so that a n plus 1 implies b n plus 1 because then since you have anchored it so to say uh, at a natural number let's say 0 um, or 1 so a 0 applies b 0 and then if you assume that it is true for an a for a number n, then it follows that it must be true for n plus 1. You are essentially 
uh, going through all natural numbers automatically. Uh, so uh, from zero, then it follows that the statement holds for one, uh, then it follows that the statement holds for two, and so on uh, to infinity. So let's use this here in our example of the geometric series. So we prove the geometric series now by induction. And we begin with the induction basis. The base case is n equal to 0. So a0 now is the statement that sn, which now is s0, is the sum from q to the 0 plus q to the to the 1 plus dot dot dot. So this is now just plus q to the n. And now we're in the case n equal to 0. So we're just looking at the uh, term q to the 0. That's, of course, equal to 1. Um, the statement B0 is uh, S0 then is equal to 1 minus Q to the N plus 1, N is 0, so 0 plus 1, divided by 1 minus um, Q. And that's, of course, Q to the 0 plus 1 is just Q, so this is 1 minus Q divided by 1 minus Q, that's also 1. So we have shown that uh, A0 indeed implies B0 because both numbers are equal to 1, both numbers as naught. Uh, if you find this uh, this case 0 too contrived and you would like to be very generous and also show it uh, for another natural number then of course you can also entertain the case n equal to 1. Yeah, uh, Then you're looking at uh, s1 which is the sum from uh, q to the 0 plus q to the 1 plus dot 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 plus q to the n. If n is 1, you're just looking at q to the 0 plus q to the 1. Uh, that certainly is 1 plus q. Uh, and then you want to show that this implies b1, which is s1 is equal to 1 minus q to the 1 plus 1 uh, divided by 1 minus q. Well, uh, this is 1 minus q square divided by 1 minus q. Um, what is 1 minus q square divided by 1 minus q? Uh, if you feel like doing a, a long division here, you're welcome to do so. So this would be minus q square plus 1 divided by minus q plus 1, right? Uh, what is this? Uh, first... Uh, I get q, so now I take uh, minus q times q, this is minus q square, and uh, then I take uh, 1 times q, this is plus q, then I subtract minus q square minus minus q square is 0, uh, 1 minus q um, uh, divided by minus q plus 1, this is certainly just 1, or 1 plus q, and aha, I see indeed uh, 1 minus q squared divided by 1 minus q is equal to 1 plus q, and that is equal to s1 according to statement a1. Um, but now this was very generous. Right? Uh, and we would have already been done by just showing the statement for n equal to 0 in terms of the covering the induction, step, uh, induction base. Now we need, of course, to do the induction step. We do the induction step. So uh, if, you, if you will, you can break this induction step up into two because you first assume that the statement is true for n. So this means that Sn, which is the sum over q to the 0 plus q to the 1 plus da 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 plus q to the n, implies that Sn is equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q. Um, and now, that's the assumption part, and now it's the part that doesn't require any work. Now comes the part that requires work. So now show that uh, it must follow that An plus 1 implies Bn plus 1. So what would that mean? Uh, a n plus 1 is the statement that s n plus 1 is given by q naught plus q to the 1 plus da 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 plus q to the n plus 1. 
and now I need to show that it follows um, uh, bn plus 1, that sn is equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 2 divided by 1 minus q. Uh, how do I show this? Well, I show this by using the induction assumption. The induction assumption says, maybe I should have written here, should have written q to the n plus q to the n plus 1. The induction assumption says that this part here is equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q. Uh, and so by using the induct induction assumption I get that as n plus 1 is equal to 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q plus q to the n plus 1. Okay. That is equal to um, uh, 1 minus q to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus q plus q to the n plus 1 times 1 minus q divided by 1 minus q because then I haven't done anything to q to the n plus 1. I have just multiplied it by 1. This is equal to, now I have the same denominator, 1 minus q to the n plus 1 um, plus q to the n plus 1 minus q to the n plus 2. Now you see where this is going. These cancel and I certainly arrive at my statement b n plus 1 that s n plus 1 is given by s n plus 1 is given by 1 minus q to the n plus 2 divided by 1 minus q and this concludes the proof by mathematical induction. Yeah, And so now we have seen the geometric series four ways for the four different possibilities to prove the statement a implies b and which one you choose is now a matter of taste. I personally would say that um, contraposition and contradiction in these cases look a bit contrived and that the direct method is very short and elegant and that the uh, induction method also has a certain elegance to it. It's not quite as short, um, but that's also th those are the methods that you see most often in textbooks for showing the geometric series. But the other two are also uh, perfectly valid mathematical proofs. And often you are not in the a luxurious position that you can easily write down all four of them as I can do here uh, but you're actually only able to establish one of them and then it's good to have all four uh, possibilities or for all four tools on hand and then you can just try if one of them works. So uh, that was uh, the method of proof video so thank you very much for watching.